Yeah. This is going to be the first stream on my new computer. I do have to get my new mic, so this will be hopefully the last time. I want to try and stop and get something either tonight or tomorrow. I don't know yet. We'll figure it out. Either way, I hope to get a brand new setup so that I can uh, make this a little bit more, a little nicer for everybody. Um, it does look a lot crisper. I'll give it that. It looks nicer. Probably not much different than my other computer, but it, this computer has a lot more it has more abilities. I've already been able to kind of work with some other things that I'll be doing. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. But like I said, this is the first stream with the with the new stuff. So we're gonna pull these because why not? It's a good way to start a video. Boom. I I just pulled. Yeah, see, I pulled like I think 50 of these and I got no blues. Sad, sad state of affairs. Uh, for those of you who are interested, there is a wonderful event going on. Where if you summon a legendary hero, here, let's, here, if you summon a legendary hero from Ancient Shards with a 0.5% chance, so that means you have a 99.5% chance of getting crap. How does that sound? All right, so either way, we're not doing it, so it don't matter. Uh, but I figured I'd let you know. So, ooh, hello, chicken pack. Uh, so this video... Let's uh, let's just you know, let's just do a quick overview again of what we're doing. Every time I'd like to do it in the beginning, just so that when people watch this, they uh, they know what's going on. We only are pulling mystery shards. We are not pulling any of this stuff, so we have a lot of stuff that we could pull. We're not going to do it because we are masochists. We like to uh, beat ourselves silly and only summon for mystery shards. So the only heroes I can use are heroes that we summon from green shards. Or summons that I can get. I mean, heroes that I can get from either logging in or basically only heroes that everyone gets. So none of the limited time heroes, no heroes you can get from fusions, nothing. Um, and just to give you an idea, we have four heroes right now. We're at up to four that we cannot use. So we got Orn, Tomo, Death Knight, and Deliana. So that's four heroes that you won't be able to get if you're doing what I'm doing. So therefore, I won't be using them to do what I'm doing and that's it um, everyone else you can get on your you can get just by either playing for a while um, or grinding or whatever whatever it is you need to do to do it so today's video is brought to you by the letter spend money holy cow all right um, so basically today what we're gonna be doing I just want to go over some things that may or may not help people that are newer uh, you know I'm not really there's not much going on new in the way of what I've been doing today, what I've been doing, so I'll just do this. Um, we are trying to beat, the only thing really new right now is we're trying to beat the clan boss on Brutal. So everybody's putting all of their keys into there. I should have another two keys at least before this ends. So um, if some of the bigger people, I don't know if a couple people, yeah, a few people jumped in here and did this, but whatever. Um, so we're gonna try and go for this. As long as some of the bigger guys log in and do their keys, uh, I don't think we'll have a problem, so we'll see. Because I'll probably end Brutal with like 50 to 70 million, depending on if I get that fifth key. So I do have another one coming in two hours, and then I think another one later tonight. And if I really get crazy and I wake up early, I can use another key. So basically six keys. So I could conceivably do, you know, about 80 million-ish, so to speak, uh, on this thing. So we're going to hopefully do that today. Um, so new stuff, stuff for new people, new people that are really either trying this or they don't want to spend two ninety nine dollars on this mini mix pack and this guy scares them, you know, whatever the reason is, uh, things that you want to do in the beginning. So, and I don't even, in the beginning could be a lot of things for certain people. I mean, to be honest, some of this stuff might be kind of not, you just don't realize it. Let's put it that way. If this is your first playthrough. So the first thing, which is a big one is your heroes so you want to pick heroes that have the skills you need to do the things you need to do so let's kind of look at this real quick so we have spirit host so this is a farmable hero that you can get and it will help you a lot so what what is her purpose so you you look at her skills she heals by the damage inflicted it's what it, it is what it is this however 
is where she comes into play. So she has block debuffs. All right. So when you have a, a team, when you're trying to play through, um, you know, the void potion keep, um, if you're trying to, uh, what is it? basically anything that throws debuffs at you, uh, spider is good for this. Um, who else is good for in this? You've got this, the, I have to think about all of these. There's so many, uh, and yet I can't think of any. Isn't that the great way to go? Um, yeah, the, the spider and doom tower, the void, the void potion keep, um, a lot of really weird waves in doom tower, especially. And then in nightmare areas where you get hit with debuffs all the time, freeze attacks, um, the ice golem, any, the, the dragon, for, I mean, there's pretty much endless places where debuffs are going to be thrown at you. So you're going to want to have block debuffs. And the thing is with this skill, which is what makes her kind of special, is that she doesn't just block them. She removes them. So basically, if you get hit with, if your whole team gets hit with something, you can block debuffs on your whole team. I mean, remove the, all the debuffs off your team and then block them for another round. So downside for this is it's only one turn. So essentially what happens is, is, especially when you're at this level, when you have a bunch of heroes that are really fast, is that you're going to end up blocking debuffs and then your whole team's going to go and then they're going to get hit by debuffs. So downside, but she's a rare, so you can't really expect much. At least she removes them and that's really what really matters. Um, and that's why we use her. So this is one of the things that you're looking for in a hero in the beginning. You want somebody who can remove block debuffs. Very important. Uh, Kale. Kale's a damage dealer, but that's it. He has poisons, which help in clan boss. Uh, to be honest, that's that's all he does. He's he's a damage dealer. He's a nuker, and there's not really much to write home about him. So we're gonna skip him. All right, War Maiden, another farmable hero. Uh, she increases, places a 50% increased attack buff on this champion, and places an extra hit if it's critical. Always good to have an extra attack, but that's not why we have her. So this is why we have her. So. All attacks all enemies has 70% chance of placing a 60% decrease debuff. So now you've got Spirit Host increasing attack and you've got War Maiden who decreases defense. So boom, you got a 60% 60, 60 decrease in defense. Your attack is now 50% higher and now you can hit really freaking hard. So this is, this is where a lot of people kind of fail in the beginning of this game. They don't really understand the importance of attack down defense down um attack up you know defense up there's there's things that you can do and there's heroes that will do multiple versions of these things so if you have a hero that you're just kind of looking at and you don't really know what to do you know check their skills if they have the skills that you're looking for like these then it might be worth building them and you really want things that attack all enemies or hit all heroes you don't want oh i can remove a debuff from one hero like most of the time that's really not going to help uh you might have like a, a, a one-off hero that has those skills but it doesn't really matter uh here we go we've got apothecary all right he heals always good he attacks always good this is where it matters so it places a 30 percent increased speed buff and fills the turn meter now the speed is good it's good don't get me wrong speed is is good the increased speed however there's a ton of heroes that do this skill and what I mean this skill is, I mean there's a ton of heroes that increase turn meter. I, I have like at least five or six right now that do it. So they're going to be good for different scenarios. He's kind of good at keeping like, at one hero who's about to die for from dying because he's got a really strong heal. So it is good. A lot of the other ones that have this skill don't heal. Almost all of them will do either a revive or uh you know increase you know crit increase crit damage like they, there's there's all kinds of mixes of this skill so you really just got to figure out which one does the best apothecary is probably the best at what he does uh it's just he's just good and with his masteries he does really well however you have other heroes that can do this so you've got you know broad maw he revives allies also which is what he does but here places crit rate and increased speed and fills turn meter the thing is is that the reason that this is a good skill all right is because of the turn meter all right it just increasing speed in and of itself and crit rate not bad 
the turn meter is what matters. The reason you want these skills is because it immediately boosts your turn meter. It doesn't say, oh, you're going to move faster. And then if your turn meter is not high enough and the other team is fast or the other monster is fast, then they get to hit you first. If you fill the turn meter, immediately you get to go first. Okay? So you want these skills. There's also another hero that actually raises the turn meter by 25%. Uh, I believe it's Anointed. He's a barbarian. Kind of trash hero as far as like his other skills, but if you need a turn meter booster, it's it's higher. He just has really bad speed, so you really got to boost his speed in order to make him to make him work. But if you do, then you get a 25% boost to your turn meter, which is obviously 10% better than this. So, but these guys give you all this other stuff. Um, the other things you want: HP burn. You need HP burn. You're gonna need it on at least one of these heroes and decrease attack. Guess what? Coffin Smasher does both. So he can decrease attack, and he can do HP burn. So this is a very good skill to have. You want at least one or two HP burners because they're going to be very helpful later on in Doom Tower. So these are the things you want. Uh, another skill. Here you go. Heal reduction. Really important. You're going to need it for the potion keep, for spirit keep, and maybe a couple of other heroes that, you know, I mean, a couple other bosses that you're going to need to kill. So that is very important so he she does it if you need a hero that you can farm and get quickly you get rock tooth for free in the beginning and you can farm him as well in the campaign locations so there you go something very important um he places shield buffs shield buffs are important uh you even if you don't have shields you can always put shield gear on but the problem with the shield gear is that that shield's gone as soon as those three turns are over so it's more of a buffer than it is anything else to stop you from getting messed up in the first, you know, two or three rounds. You really want somebody who can put up shields, which is where Valerie comes in. Where she actually does a shield buff and she also does a heal with it, which is good. The other thing that she does that's really good is she increases duration of all buffs. This is something you should be looking for. Uh, Hell is a Hell Freak. I forgot her name. Hell something. She's a demon spawn. You can pull. Uh, she's rare. So she does the same thing, but she doesn't have, you know, I don't know if she has the attack or not. But you want somebody who can increase the duration of buffs. Increase the duration of buffs, increase the duration of debuffs. Both of these things are good. She does both. This is why Valerie is so good. All right. She's, she's, it's weird. She's like not amazing at anything. She's just kind of good at everything. So, and that's kind of how she works. She's got a heal, she's got a shield, she's got an increased duration, and a decreased duration, and an increased attack. So she's kind of like a, a jack of all trades. So she makes a really good secondary booster healer uh, in five-man content if you're having trouble keeping heroes alive. Uh, especially when there's a lot of debuffs being thrown at you. Especially if it's one-turn debuffs, she just removes them essentially because she decreases their duration. So that's always good. A1, she just hits people. Nothing to write home about there. So that's one of the main things you really want to know is you need heroes that can do these specific things. Um, I also have here, let's put these, let's put him away. Some honorable mentions here. Uh, we're going to pull him, her, him. Who else we got? Who's some honorable mentions here that we can pull? Marked. All right, Hell Freak. Um, I don't know if Lamb has anything that I'm really interested in writing home about. Um, really just poison. Poison can't be hard to get. Isn't I mean, not hard to get. Uh, poison can't be overlooked. So there's a lot of heroes that do poison. She's one of them. But we're not going to pull her for this. Uh, here we'll pull Anointed. And let's see. Let's pull him. I don't know if she does anything special, but we'll pull her anyway. And then Templar it is very important. Let's pull these. All right, so let's look at some of the lower end heroes that I have that will also do things that you need. So Totem, all right, has a poison. That means good for, um, that means good for clan boss. It means, you know, oh, well, that's all it means is really good for clan boss. Um, she has a continuous heal buff on herself, not really great. Has a 50% chance of removing a random buff from the target, also very good. Um, she also has a decreased defense on targets, so that's also good. So she's like a mini War Maiden, someone to look forward to. Uh, Conqueror, he has a remove random buffs from the target. That's important for certain, you know, 
for the like was that magic keep and a couple other things really good for the arena for deliana if you need somebody to take things that take uh take deliana down because when you take her health down she'll end up boosting that uh she puts on a protection so you can remove the protection good for you know what's his name that annoying paragon uh you just need high accuracy which i don't have right now because his accuracy is trash so i can't pull it off a lot of times so if some if you have a paragon with a lot of resist ain't gonna work um stoop, there we go and then this is a big one enemies killed by the skill cannot be revived also good for the arena also good for ice golem these are things that you should be looking for for a lot of the things um for a lot of certain content let's put it that way um really good for arena though i i'm very surprised by him in arena uh mostly tag team I use him. I used to use him a lot on the regular arena in the beginning on some of my other old accounts, and he kind of fell off a little for me. But he's still good, and I am going to get him to sixty like fairly soon because I do like this guy a lot, and he reminds me of Dark Souls. Um, I'm just going to throw her in here because she has it. Uh, decrease speed is very important for certain bosses, like the uh, Iron Twins, things like that. So. She's definitely someone you want to look for, um, and I will be building her as well. Marked, I don't know her kit that well. I don't use her too much. I know she has some good stuff. So she has a decreased defense debuff on her A1, which is really good. Um, any Anytime their normal attack does something, anytime their normal attack does something good, like this, decreased defense, it's worth it. Um, she has a decreased accuracy buff, which is good for you know teams that are doing annoying stuff. And she has block debuff, block debuff, on all allies for one turn and 60% increased defense buff on all allies. So these are very good things to have. Increasing defense will help you not die. Um, so Marked is a solid hero. We've got Hellborn Sprite. That's what it was. She, she's got Weaken. Very good. We definitely want Weaken. Uh, heal reduction also. So that's good. And she has an increased duration of all ally buffs by one turn. And then places a 15% increased crit rate buff on all allies, also very good. So these are the things that you need to be looking for. If you're not paying attention to these kinds of skills and what they do, then you're going to have a lot of trouble in this game. You're going to need these things to increase. Like if you have a hero like her, you know, Hellborn Sprite, you could have somebody who's poisoning the dragon, and then she'll come in and just increase the increase the debuff, right? Uh, ally buff, sorry. Increases ally buffs, then plays 15%. Oh, sorry, this is sorry. You increase your if you put attack or a shield on somebody or unkillable. Let's say you know there you go. Boom. The duration of that buff now is one more turn. So let's say you have a hero like Gnarlhorn. Okay, here I'll pull them out for you so you can kind of see. I don't. I know there's certain things that don't work with increasing, but I think it might work with Gnarlhorn. Let me just say I, I'm not sure. So we'll pull him out. So right here we've got. Mr. Gnarlhorn, who has a skill, but this one. So he places an unkillable on his, on him for two turns. This has a five turn cooldown. So as soon as you book him, it goes down to three. So now you have two turns of unkillable and there's one round that he can be killed. All right, so now let's look at her. Four turn cooldown, down to three turns, okay? So, increase the duration of all allied buffs. Now, by one turn. So now, his unkillable goes to three turns. Now, the only thing is, is that they're both on a three turn cooldown, right? So, does that matter? Probably not, because what's going to happen? He's going to put his unkillable up. She would use her increased duration of all buffs. All right, so now he's at three turns. So by the time it cycles again, he's essentially unkillable forever. So that's that's where you need to start kind of like looking at certain heroes. Like you might look at this and be like, oh, increased duration of all buffs. I don't care. Well, there's situations where it's highly, highly, highly good for you. So yeah, definitely look into it um, and make sure you know what your heroes are doing. Hold on one second. Let's see. All right. So there we go. Um, so this is a big thing. This is what I want you guys to really think about is what can what can you do to make sure that the skills that you're getting are the ones that will actually help you in the battles. All right, because there are going to be certain things, certain times where skills are going to be super important. Like if you have a hero that 
maybe your team is dying and you need somebody who can do increased defense then that might change the game that might change your entire your entire fight um increasing attack will make battles go a lot quicker because you're going to be able to increase your power by 50 percent. i mean that's where spirit host comes in really well um someone like him like i said feels terminated by 25 percent and places a crit rate buff this could make it so that you don't have to put so much crit rate on some of your heroes all right so there are things that will help you go faster and work harder now you put like six of these heroes together you know even four of them like you know this one this one this one and then you know and valerie let's just say you know you've got a bunch of attacks up you've got a bunch of defense down you've got shields you've got heals you've got poisons you know what i mean like it's a good synergy that's why you know so you now you, if you have these two these two do poisons he does poisons you know she'll drop a poison here and there but she does defense down and attack up so now you've got attack up defense down poison team and then if you want you can even switch one of these two out for valerie she will increase the duration of said poisons and you know attacks and stuff so there's there's combinations of certain heroes that just work um the other thing that you might want to think about when you're doing when you're when you're building your heroes is get them to level 60. pick a hero in each one of these categories that does the things that you need them to do all right and start building them immediately not like not get them to 50 not get them to 50 and then maybe throw some you know five star gear on them and hope for the best like just get them to 60. even if they're not the best hero if, if they're the only hero that drops the fence if war maiden is the only one you have and i actually think she's great so i would build her first anyway but if she's if she's not you know the only one that does drop defense that you have get her to 60. that level 60 hero will do way more than any group of 50s you're probably going to have obviously there's going to be a few exceptions to that but most of those exceptions are legendaries and you know other heroes that are just ridiculous that just their their kid is just built to be you know as a backup to a hero so they will work at 50 but in the, in this scenario just go to 60 get them a 60 make sure that they're good and then eventually you'll have a bunch of 60 heroes that can do everything you need and you can always then start working on the one that's better so don't think that you know building any hero to 60 is a waste of time it could end up helping you especially when you once gear sets become a thing you could always adjust the gear sets on a hero and make them good again so they might be kind of cr trash in the beginning but then be good later on um ooh. Yeah, level 60s. As you can see, I have what? We have what? 6, 12, 60s right now, which is actually pretty impressive for me. I'm, uh, this is the most 12, 60s I've ever had. Um, and we have one on the way. So basically, we're going to have 13 60s. And then I have probably Conqueror, probably Totem, and then these two, and a few other heroes that I'm looking to get to 60 eventually. But for right now, we'll just get them to 50. Um,. Just because i want to start getting my clan wars together but that's because i have all the heroes that i technically need to really move forward except for spider so spider is the only one that i'm struggling with and i'm gonna have to build a couple heroes for that so other than that though i'm basically done with building it's just it's all just gear now um just a few other heroes that i pulled out real quick um she does decrease speed fills champion turn meter and counter attack Really, the best thing here really is this. She has the decreased speed, which is really good. But having a counter attack is definitely good. Her attack is really good too. This attacks all heroes and fills her turn meter for each living, living enemy, so that's good. Helps you take down waves. And then he's got a really cool skill. So he will do poisons, um, and then he has a chance of increasing the duration of all debuffs on an enemy. So if you're doing like a boss, and there's a ton of poisons on it, yeah. This is sick skill. So he's good for clan boss, or really just boss killing in general. And he has a weakened debuff he gives too, so that's always good. And he looks pretty badass, right? Looks like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle if he went evil. Um, Templar has Provoke, which is very good, and he does block damage even better. So once again, this is one of those things where you could drop the cooldown to three. Um, it does only block damage for one round. But yeah, you could extend it for two now. So now you'll have two rounds to block damage. And that's good. 
Let's get rid of these guys. All these fun bags. All right, and Gnarlhorn too. So yeah, think synergy, think heroes that do good things and which heroes can work well with each other. Um, couple things to note. Ooh. Oh, did the Forge Pass restart? I forgot that it says it's reset time. Yeah, it's seven o'clock. Um, so that means we get some, we can summon some things. <laughs> All right, so other things. Don't do what I do here um, unless you're trying to actually do what I'm doing here. So if you're going to be doing, if you're going to be building a team and teams that you are using other shards, that, like I'm only using green, so I need attack. Like my heroes suffer from from damage. It's kind of, it's, it's not that great. So I do attack. I just like it. It just helps. I can, I can rebuild in other ways. Like I can build crit and I mean, resist and accuracy with gear. However, if you are doing this, I would recommend just staying in this side for your first 10. Um, crit damage would probably be better. It's 20, 25% increase in damage for crit. Um, so it's 5% more than attack. That's why people say you should do crit, crit damage. Um, and because it, it also helps every hero, not just your attack heroes. That's why they say that really. Resist is always good. 80 resist will, will be amazing. 80 accuracy would be amazing on all your heroes. So yeah, definitely these are the ones you want to stick in. So don't do what I do. Well, for certain things. That's only if you're pulling. Remember, that's only if you're pulling your shards and you're getting good heroes. Um, otherwise, if you're following this guy to the T, sure, build attack. The other thing, the Altar of Souls. This probably won't unlock for a little bit when you're in when you're starting out, but if you are unlocked, ooh, I wish I had one more. I would buy this. I really like him. He's 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 good. Um, basically, you're gonna do you're gonna use your coins here. Wait, let's just listen to the scary. All right, enough. Um, use all your coins to buy moral soul stones. Then. When you get coins after summoning 10 times, these 200, come in here and just buy these. That's it. This is just for the beginning, because um, I can't get these any other way. So the only way to get them is to buy them. And at least that way you can get an awakening for all the heroes that you want. That's it, that's the reason it. So when they pop up in the store, you just buy them and that's it. That's why I have so many awakenings on all my heroes. It's because I just waited and bought them with those coins. All right, otherwise you're doing a luck shot that you're even gonna get a hero that you freaking have. So in the beginning, 100% just use this. But look at this, I have, all these guys have, that's 12, 15, 18. That's it, is that all I have? I have 18? So I have 18 of them awakened. And that's with me only doing the first level. I still have a ton of work to do in the, in the towers. Um, my soul collection is looking pretty good. I have some good heroes in here. I have Trunda, four star Trunda. I have a four star of this guy. He's one of the new heroes, I think, right? Uh, I have three star uh, Cle Cle Cleopatrix, whatever the fuck, whatever the fuck her name is, uh, which I will get eventually. But as of right now, she's just sitting there. And I have a couple other heroes that are pretty good. But yeah, most of this stuff is gonna be sitting here for a little bit. But yeah, I have a decent collection, and I've got all the main heroes that I want to build set up. Uh, so that's that. Guardian ring, fill this out as quickly as you can. I wouldn't go too crazy on it in the beginning, beginning, because you're going to be spending time building heroes. So more than likely, you're going to be like me, and you're going to end up finishing, uh, where is it? Like the Night Revenants, the Demon Spawn. Um, probably lizards and barbarians you're gonna probably end up finishing those first not because they're better or worse but because you just happen to farm those areas more so you'll end up uh, getting more of those heroes now if you farm for Templar a lot to get uh, what is that the uh, lifesteal gear then you may end up filling sacred order first but just make sure you fill these out because these stat increases are really helping A huge boost to your heroes all right definitely want to do that um the other thing is ooh, let's go in here what do we get for the login we get 200k um the other thing is don't go crazy skill booking out heroes until you know that you want to keep them it's okay to build them it's okay to even ascend them like but don't book them until you know that you're going to continue to use them 
because a hero that's not booked will more than likely perform just as well unbooked. Um, well, at least will perform their job good without the books. Once you have the books, it just makes them that much better. So that's important. Always do that. The other thing is masteries. In the beginning, it's going to be tough. Like You're going to be buying your first two, three, possibly even four sets of masteries. And that's your best way to really build power quickly and be able to take down certain things before you probably should. Because otherwise, it's going to take you a long time to farm them. Until you're comfortably beating level 15 on Minotaur, it's probably best that you just buy the masteries for your main heroes. Don't just buy masteries for anybody. All right, it's got to be a good hero that you 100% know you're going to use. That's a really good hero that will do everything. And Kale is one of them. He's a good campaign farmer. So, yeah, I would buy his masteries immediately. I ended up buying his. I bought her. I bought her. And I think I bought him. There you go. So I bought these four. So that's 800 times four, which is 3,200 gems I spent to get these four heroes masteries. Now that I have them, though, I don't need any other heroes to beat Minotaur 15. So guess what? I farmed them all now. And now we have all these heroes farmed out with all of their masteries. Well, not not these two, but her. And yeah, so I've got a decent amount of heroes. Uh, oh, I can't lie. I think I bought his too. My bad. So that's 4,000 gems. I bought his because I was trying to beat something a while back. It's in the videos. So I, I wanted to build him really quickly. And I built him in like literally like two or three days. I got him maxed because I was trying to beat Scarab King. And I was angry and I had a ton of gems. So yeah. But other than that, I've been farming them now. So I everyone I just farmed, I just finished farming her. And I just finished farming her. I did them pretty quickly because I had nothing else better to do. And I had no ex EXP boost. So yeah, they're all ready to rumble. So farming mastery is important. In the beginning, at least get this first set. Like if you need to farm some heroes, at least get this first. Even just these two are good because you get the crit rate, you get the crit damage, you get some attack when you're at high health, and you get accuracy. So these top little layers here are perfect for new newer players. If you don't want to invest too much into masteries, this right here will get you more than you need in the beginning to really boost your power. Um, other things important stuff speed on boots is super important and crit rate on gloves is super important all right the only time that this changes is when you have a hero that you need to intentionally make slow you know like a a hero that will block 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 damage or something like that if you slow that dam that hero down to the point where they're just literally just base speed you might have the other team going two or three times and you're just going to be blocking all the damage. Uh, now, in and of itself, that's dumb because then as soon as it wears off, you die, right? Well, if you have a hero like um, like Helicath, where they block damage and then they can counterattack, well, guess what? Every time you hit, you get hit, you're going to counterattack and they won't do any damage. So for two rounds, because you're so slow, it'll just be them attacking you and you, cr you countering. So basically you get, you know, eight turns instead of one. Really annoying, by the way. <laughs> I know, I've had it happen to me. So, but crit rate only changes when you get into this, where your crit rate is high enough, which mine still isn't high enough. I haven't gotten it. It's, it's good enough where I can live with it. But then you'll switch into crit damage. All right, once you can build your crit rate up decently high, then off the other gear, yeah, you're going to want to do crit damage because it makes you a lot stronger. Right there, this change right here, once you do this change, you're going to see a huge change to your power. Like, it's it's almost ridiculous. Because now, look, I'm doing 65% more damage, all right, on a critical hit. So, yeah. And then when you start getting into, like, the three, 4,000, here, he's 3,600 uh, attack power, that's a pretty significant boost. And I'm not even high. Like, this is, like, technically considered a trash hero. So, um but yeah, this is this is all little things that you could easily do to keep yourself going and make sure you do the right things in the beginning. You want to farm and sell all the garbage that you get um, and make sure that's how, that's how you get silver. Just farm 12-3 on whatever difficulty you're at. If you're at the beginning of the game, then whatever. Farm 9-3. Like, it doesn't matter. I don't I don't care. Just pick a, pick a, the best, the highest level you can beat 
and farm it on three. There you go. That's basically it. Um, but that'll definitely help you out. The other thing is make sure you look at your stats. Okay, stats on your gear is important. Don't just throw gear on it just because, like, if you find a crit, crit damage glove, don't just throw it on there because you think, you know, it's good because it's got crit damage. Like, this has 12% attack, it's got some defense, it's got accuracy, which we need, and it's got defense. I would much rather have this defense be in attack, defense, or um, defense percent, or accuracy. Preferably accuracy because he does poisons, and my accuracy on him sucks. So I'm basically using Kale right now as a pure nuker. Like I'm not using him for his poisons except for clan boss, but I'd like to build that up. So that would be that would be good to fix that. Um, so accuracy is really good for him. Crit rate would be really good for him. Speed would be good for him. You want to find here was this here. There was one piece of gear that I had that was really beastly on some. All right, so like this. So this resistance is plus two. Thirty-three resistance is very good. Just so you know, if you can get a three on this, even better. Um, preferably, you could have a crit rate, you know, where it's, I think I have a piece that's like 20% crit rate on one piece. So, yeah, if you had four pieces that have that on it, you got an 80% crit rate plus is their base, their base, you're good. So, crit damage will immediately be better. Um, here we go. And then you can, speed i think i would almost always put the boot speed always like it's really really rare that you're gonna not do that um even using if you have like six pieces of gear that all have speed on it that are like two and three boosted i mean unless it's a, an attack hero that you have that gear on honestly i would still put speed boots on them because if more than likely the heroes that you're doing that with would be either an arena team which is annoying because you'd be fast but it works um or a speed tuner in which case you want that hero to be as fast as possible so if that hero has you know 3000 i mean 300 speed it ain't gonna hurt you um but overloading a, a team with speed is really only i mean i can't say it's only good for the arena but if you're if you're three turning teams in in doom tower where they don't get to go technically that works too you just it'll just be a slower fight that's all so you don't want to go too crazy you want your you want to max your damage while maxing your speed basically um so yeah always look for gear with speed it can't hurt you uh and these for accessories yeah you want more than likely you're going to want resist or accuracy on most heroes there's going to be a few where it doesn't matter crit damage is always for your nukers and that's it like i mean just put crit damage on your nukers everyone else you can do whatever you need to do um you know defense hp if you want a hero that's you know their attack is based on hp yeah yeah you could do that if they're a damaged damage dealing defensor yeah crit damage can't hurt because it works on everybody um and then ring same thing just pick the stat that works for your hero um and the other thing is just don't worry if you have to move gear around all right like if you need to take this off of her and put it on someone else once you get to where i'm at and you're a couple months in silver isn't going to be that big of a problem as far as changing gear as long as you're not doing it every day don't don't waste don't waste it all right but yeah you're not gonna have that much of a problem with it um and yeah that's basically most of the new stuff for new people always buy from the market always buy your shards and you know the random here and there things but always buy shards in here always check it try to unlock your slots in here not as soon as possible like i think it took me like a, about a month or two to unlock most of this and i just unlocked these two recently so don't think that has to happen immediately and the guardian ring this doesn't have to be unlocked immediately it probably should be unlocked soon uh i may unlock like a couple slots here and there as i move through um to be honest i could unlock them all right now i just don't want to yet i mean i know it's going to help me because you can just put a bunch of four stars in here and eventually they'll be ready to to feed so that's good uh and it's you know it's never, it's never a bad thing to have a bunch of 40s you didn't have to level so um yeah i mean that's most of the, the stuff that most people don't really think about um try to i mean other than that really it's it's just making sure that you pay attention to which heroes do what and as an example we will do the last thing on this before i go we will fight the brutal i was waiting for 
the uh, reset so that I could do it. I didn't want to do it uh, without getting the, the points for it. So, <laughs> Alright, so this is the clan boss that I've been using. I've been showing it a lot. Um, the main thing here to know is that every hero in here is built for this fight to have a purpose, okay? Now, Kale was originally the main purpose. He was the poisoner, and that was his purpose, was to do most damage. That has since changed, because he doesn't have Warmaster, and he's just not putting up the numbers that I want. Because, more than likely, because his accuracy isn't high, so he might miss him. But even when he does really good, he doesn't do really good. So, he's kind of losing his, his oomph in here, so to speak. Because uh, he's the only hero, he's a selfish DPS, is what he is. And the only reason he's doing the damage he's doing is because I have Frozen Banshee who is using the poison sensitivity to make his poison stronger. See? Boom. There you go. So, basically Apothecary keeps the speed going and he heals. Alright. Um, this girl here, Grave Chill, she drops the fence and does insane amounts of poisons because I have her poison gear and all of her skills do poison. So she's really good. Frozen Banshee does the poison sensitivity, which increases the damage of all three of my poisoners. And she has an insane amount of poisons, and she's in, uh, not reflex, I always want to say reflex gear. Um, the one that gives you the extra, an 18% chance to attack again. So she's constantly just poisoning and recycling her turn. And then Valerie basically extends all my debuffs and my, my buffs Gives me shields, gives me heals, keeps everybody with a little bit of an attack boost. So she is really good for this. I actually ended up taking out Spirit Host, who does a 50% attack increase for Valerie, because Valerie was so much better at this specific thing. Um, Spirit Host is better for like the beginning areas, and she's also better at, gear, at any content that you want to just speed through that doesn't require you to worry about dying. So as you can see, this team works well together. So, there's a few heroes that I'm going to replace. You know, if I had a Veer, he would be someone that I might replace in here. Because he does also poison, and he does healing, and he does a couple other things that are really good. Um, we'd like to get a Weaken in here. Uh, decrease attack, maybe. Or an increased defense into this fight. Because that'll keep us a lot... Really, the decreased attack is really the big one. But increased defense would help also. So, I may end up considering bringing Marked in here possibly because um, she does do those things and she has a buff a block debuff thing so that's always good um, but yeah this has been this has been an evolution this team like it started with just kale and whoever I had it moved into kale and spirit host and then it moved into kale spirit host and war maiden and then apothecary came along and then Valerie, and it's like I've basically been the same team. And then eventually, War Maiden got replaced with Grave Chill because Grave Chill throws out a hundred times more poisons. And Frozen Banshee was a no-brainer. She she definitely overtook Spirit Host because I didn't need her anymore because the damage that Frozen Banshee puts out far outweighed anything that Spirit Host could do. So. Yeah, this has been a good this has been a good evolution of my my clan boss. And you can literally watch I wouldn't I don't know if you're gonna go back and watch all my videos because that's a lot of videos to watch, but um, and a lot of time unless you just really need to know things on how I did this. Uh, yeah, this has just been an evolution that you can literally go back and watch on how I kind of adjusted my team here and there, like even little tweaks, um, adding War Master to get the extra damage. And yeah, this is on brutal. It's and there you go. We did almost 14 million on Brutal, so that's good. With a bunch of random random rares. See? So so there we go. We got 42 million and three keys. Not not, not terrible. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. And it's only going to keep going up from there. So that's the good news. <laughs> oh, here we go. We got a bunch of people doing things. And it's good that everyone's actually trying to be Brutal. I like it. Where are we anyway? 63%. Um, we're waiting on, our, on the two big guys to come in here and do some damage because they actually uh, they do a lot. Let's put it that way. Alright, so that's uh, that's basically it. Just team comp. Getting your heroes to 60 um, is a big thing. I mean, I know that sounds like it's 
you know, a no-brainer. But you really got to get good at that because it's super important to do that. It's also really super important that you do all your quests every single day. Every single day. Like daily, weekly, monthly. If you're doing them all. If you're not doing all these every day, you're slowing yourself down. Um, and obviously all your quests, challenges, all that stuff. So I only have one challenge left. And I'm done. <laughs> Alright, so that's basically it. Just wanted to do another little video. Because it gets... Sometimes I know it gets lost on people who are really trying to... Um, figure out how this game works and what works and why it works the way it works. So figured I would just do a little video on it and you know, hopefully it helps. If it doesn't help you, then I'm sorry. You'll just have to wait till my next video for me to babble on about what I've been doing with this with this account. Not much has changed since my last video though, so you're okay. Um, I will be starting some new videos as well. I have uh, I will be doing some Battle Night videos. It's an idle game, so I'll be starting that now that I have the ability to, to actually use it um so i'll be doing that and i'll be adding a couple other new games to my repertoire now that i can actually you know i can actually play them on here and it's not a garbage computer so that's going to help a lot <laughs> all right so thank you guys for watching appreciate it as always and i uh, will see y'all next time take care